Hello. Hello. Hey. Hi, uh, Diana. Hey, it's great to have you here. Thank you. <laughs> you All right, so I'm gonna write uh, the names of the participants of today. We have. Give me just one second. I need to write this down. Diana. I'm trying to call uh, Angie. Let me call Nuvia. But in the meantime, I'm gonna start recording this session. Okay. All right, it's recording. So, Diana, please uh, mute your microphone right now. We're gonna do the presentation of today's lesson. And as we're approaching to the exercises, you can unmute yourself and I'll tell you when to do that. So I'm going to share my screen right now. And today we're going to have a writing session. It's an advanced session. This is week three. Uh, on the first week, if you had it with me, we talk about the importance of the paragraph and Right there, we talk about that a good paragraph often has four sentences. On week number two, we talk about the comma and how we use the comma to list many items. Well, on today's lesson, we're going to talk about the semicolon. So in order to understand the semicolon, it's important that we know the difference between the sentence the clause and the phrase. So let's go back to the whiteboard and I'm going to do a small explanation about the sentence. The phrase and the clause. So we know that these two the phrase and the clause are groups of words. Very simple right there. Well, in the case of the sentence, we know that these are groups, yeah, but groups of what? Of phrases and clauses. What does that mean? Clause, clauses, clauses, all right. Well, it means that the clause can belong to a sentence and the phrase can make up a, a, a sentence. It is that simple. However, as today we need to talk about the semicolon, we need to perfect the conceptualization of the clause and the sentence. Give me just one second. Okay. So we have the class and the phrase. So, Diana, please unmute your microphone and tell me, do you know the difference between the class and the phrase? Okay, the the clause mm -hmm. is a is a sentence, and and the phrase I think is most complete. Okay, you got one right. Is the clause can be a sentence, but not always a sentence. However, sentence. You also mentioned that the phrase is more complex. Is that you said? Is that what you said? Can you repeat what you said about the phrase? Diana, what did you say about the phrase? The the phrase is more complete than a clause. I think the clause is more mm. simple. It's a phrase with a subject, a verb, but the phrase is more complete. Okay, very well. It's it's very close to that. And 
that's a good approach to, to the differences between that. I also have Nubia. Nubia, I'm going to write down your name so that I can mark your attendance. All right, so Diana was saying that we find some differences between completeness, and that is correct. However, let's talk about first um, about the class. So we know that the class can be a sentence. However, a better way to put that is, let me see if I can erase that. Okay. So the class, we know that it has a verb and it has a subject. One example of a clause can be, hmm, well, my cat eats fish. This is a clause. It's a clause because we know that we have a subject, my cat, and we have a verb, eats. We also have a, an, an object. It's not always necessary to have an object. However, when we have a clause, we mostly talk about verbs and subjects. And on the other hand, when we talk about phrases, the phrases are not as complete as the clause. A phrase only has one thing. So it either, it either has one verb and that's it. Or it even only has a subject and that's it. One example of that is my best friend that is a phrase and it is very simple you notice we only have one subject there is no verb this is a phrase um, in the case of phrase we have nominal phrases that relate to subjects this is a nominal phrase because it only has one subject. We also have um, adverbial phrases that has adverbs. Verb phrase uh, only has one verb or adjective phrase. Well, in conclusion, we, we know that the phrase only has one thing, whereas the clause has two things, the verb and the subject. In the case of the subject, let me go back to the whiteboard we have dependent clauses and independent clauses so the clause dependent clause what's a dependent clause a dependent clause has a subject and a verb and we don't need more information about that particular clause because uh, it can live on its own. For example, uh, Mark does the dishes. All right, Mark does the dishes. I don't. I don't need to ask. Okay, why does Mark do, does the dishes, or how does Mark does the dishes? I don't need any of that information because it's very clear to me that if you say Mark does the dishes. Um, we don't need more information about that. And I'm sorry, I just had a typo right here. This is an independent, independent class. So why is it independent? Because it can live on its own. Live on its own. We don't need more information. It's independent. Let me write it again. We also have dependent clauses because they depend on more information. For example, um, with my guitar. Okay, we have a subject and a preposition. However, if I say with my guitar, you might be wondering, okay, with my guitar, what? What are you doing with your guitar? Why do you even say that? In that case, we know this is a dependent clause because we need more uh, information about that clause.
This is normally said when we answer to a question. For example, if someone asks me, what were you playing today? What were you playing with today? You could answer with my guitar. And it's that simple. You can just simply say with my guitar. You don't need to say more information because part of the information is carried within the question. We call that dependent sentence. Now, knowing that, we can go back to the presentation about the semicolon. Remember that the semicolon is this symbol. All right. So let's talk about the uses of the semicolon. A semicolon is mostly commonly used to link a, li a single sentence. Okay, we have a single sentence. What is a single sentence? Well, it is the same as saying an independent clause. Here we have two independent clauses that are closely related in thought. Two independent clauses, remember. Two independent clauses make one whole sentence. All right, we know that. When a, sem when a semicolon is used to join two or more ideas in a sentence, those ideas are then given equal position in rank. Let's look at this example. Some people write with a word processor. Others write with a pen or pencil. So let's look at the first um, clause. What type of clause is that one? Uh, well, we know that it's an independent clause because we have some people. This is the subject. We have a verb, write with a word. All right. Just by knowing that we have a subject and a verb, we know that this is an independent clause. Now we also have another clause. Others write with a pen or a pencil. So others is our subject. And we also have a verb. What does that mean? Uh, we have two independent clauses. However, that's not the end of the story. The rule says when we have two independent clauses within one sentence and they are closely, closely related in thought. So some people write with a word processor. As I know that my second uh, independent clause is very close to this one, I need to use a semicolon. Others write with a pen or pencil. All right, guys, girls, I need you to please do me an example of this use of the semicolon. For that, uh, just write one sentence. You're going to have two minutes for that. So Diana, please give me an example of that. Write it on, on Skype. I, I'm going to see it on the Skype chat. And also, Novia, please write an example about uh, this particular use of the semicolon. Two minutes for that, please.
right so time solver Thirty seconds more. Okay, we can write this paper with this bibliography. Semicolon. This information is enough to write the paper. That is a very good example. I'm going to tell you why. So we can write this is we is our subject. Write this our verb. We can write this paper. All right. This is an independent clause. You got it, Yana. And then you have this information is enough to write the paper. This information is a subject, and we call that a noun phrase. But very good, Yana. Thank you, teacher. All right. Now we also have no yes. It says employees work with heavy machinery. Okay, we have an independent clause and the semicolon. They play the tubes very carefully. Very good. You got it, Nubia. So we can continue. Thank you, teacher. Great. Uh, just before I forget, let me write it here. So when we write, we have some levels to writing. There are actually six levels to writing. How do we know that you're a level one, level two, level three? It's by punctuation. This is why I'm teaching uh, punctuation. When, when we talk about writing. So on level one, you know how to use the uh, full stop. Level two, you know how to use the comma. Level three, which is what we're doing today, you know how to use the semi column, which is this one. So if you finish this lesson, you're going to be a level 3 writer. Use the semicolon between two independent clauses that are connected by a conjunctive adverb or transitional phrase. What is a conjunctive adverb? It's the same thing that is a transitional phrase. And I'm going to explain to you guys about that right here with this example. All right. However they choose to write, people are allowed to make their own decisions. As a result, this is our transi transitional phrase, many people swear by their writing methods. So we have two independent clauses, however they choose to write. This is our first independent clause. And I also have a second independent clause. Many people swear by their uh, writing methods. What's connecting these two independent clause? We have number one number two but what's connecting them so what's connecting it's called a transitional phrase as a result as a result many people swear by writing the methods so because i'm using a transition i need to use a semicolon what others uh transitional phrases do you know well we have in my opinion um as far as I know, um, what I have, what what my conclusion is, any of that is going to work as a transitional phrase. How do you know that? Because it's given more information about that transition that you're making between uh, the clause number one and the clause number two. All right. Now we have we also have another use and this. Use the semicolon between items in a list or series if any of the items contains commas. Let's look at the example. There are basically two ways to write. With a pen or pencil, which is, inexplic which is inexpensive and easily accessible, or by a computer uh, and printer, which is more expensive but quick and neat. Let me read it again for you. There are basically two ways to write, with a pen or pencil, which is inexpensive and easily accessible, or by a computer and a printer, which is more, inexp which is more expensive, but quick and neat. So we have here two items, writing with a pencil and writing with a computer. But writing with a pencil is not the end of the story. I'm also saying writing with a pencil is inexpensive and easily accessible. For that reason, I'm using a comma. 
On the other hand, I'm also talking about the computer, writing by computer and writing by printer. So since, since this, the computer and writer are not related, but still there's somehow a connection between those two. When I talk about the computer, I want to point out that only the computer is more expensive, but it's also quick and neat. This is why I use the semicolon. This is giving me a very good partition. So when I use the, the semicolon, the semicolon itself allows me to present my ideas more organized. Because well, when I talk about the pencil, I say one thing, and when I talk about the computer, I say another thing. Uh, we call that a series of items. Well, we have what what items do we have? The pencil and the computer. Within those items, we have commas. What type of comma? Well, an ex, an ex. Uh, what's it called? Uh, it's an explanation. I forgot the name, but but it's doing an explanation to the first item, and this one is also given an explanation to the second item. So let let's see if you got this right. Please give me an example of this. Again, write it in the Skype chat, and you're gonna have two minutes for that. Remember to use a set of commas. So list, commas, and also a semicolon. I'm gonna leave this for reference in two minutes, please. Let's make it actually four. Four minutes is better.
All right, I just got one uh, notification. So, Nubia, let's read it. The waitress is tall, blonde, and very smart. But sometimes she gets angry for no reason. Therefore, e either I am not her friend. All right, well, this is a good use of the semicolon, but it doesn't correspond particularly to this example that we were doing, which is listing and with between those lists making some commas. However, uh, the use of the comma that you propose here is because of the independent clause, but sometimes, and here, this is for no reason, uh, a transitional uh, phrase. So that's good. Don't worry for that. Now let's read Diana. In Bogota, <clears throat> the weather is very inconstant uh, all the time. Sometimes, okay, when you write sometimes, you need to lo to write lowercase because this is a colon. That's fine. Sometimes we have to, we have time very cold, wait. Sometimes we have time very cold times. No, Okay, I am guessing you did a typo. It's fine. Sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> no problem. Sometimes uh, we have very cold times, sorry. Ah, okay, I get it now. Sometimes we have very cold times. For example, today is a cold day. But in other moments, we have a very warm times, a sunny days. Okay, this is good because you're using the semicolon before a conjunction. The conjunction here is but. but this is good use of the comma. However, uh, the, the thing that I wanted to explain is that let's make a normal list. Okay, I'm going to say it in another way. When do we use commas? Commas. So let's say um, Lisa has a pig, a cow, I'm sorry, let's make, let's pretend this is a comma, a cow, um, a rabbit, and also a comma, and let's say, what, a horse. So what do we have here? Lisa has a pig, a cow. Mm, let me write it better. Not working here. In the um, whiteboard. One second. So. Right now, I'm listing a list of items. Well, we have a cow, a rabbit, a pig, and a horse. Item number one, two, three, and four. That's why I use the commas. Commas. However, when I'm using the semicolon, we have something very similar but with a little bit more of information. Let, so let me show you how that will look like with semicolons. So Lisa has a cow that eats, mm, let's say, beans. All right, now I need a semicolon, now. A pig, I'm doing more information about this pig, so a pig that flies. All right, semicolon. Now, a rabbit, I I got confused us, but it doesn't matter, it's just the order. A rabbit that 
uh, is very fast. And a horse that is tall. So, Diana, what is the difference between uh, this example and this example? Let's call it number one and number two. In the first example, you you have a list, but a, a simple list. Mm -hmm. And the second, you have a, a list, but it's more complete. Um, you describe every item. item. Mm -hmm. That's it. You got it. So that's the, that's the reason why we use commas. Well, we use commas when we don't have to explain the items. However, in this second example, I'm explaining what each of the item does. So Lisa has a cow that eats beans, a pig that flies, a rabbit that is very fast, and a horse that is tall. This is when I use the semicolon. When I use list, um, that include more information about the subjects. So, um, I also want to ask Nuvia. So, Nuvia, is that clear? Yes, With this example. Great. Because, girls, when you do the, the, the septo exam, uh, most of the exercises that we talk about can be related to the style. So, therefore, you can argue, no, I, I don't have to use a semicolon right here. However, with this precise example, it is mandatory that we always use a semicolon. Okay, now let's continue. Use an independent, uh, use a semicolon between independent clauses joined by coordinating conjunctions if the clauses are already punctuated with commas or if the clauses are lengthy. What can we say about this? Well, Use a semicolon when you're going to use commas, but the, the independent clauses are very long. All right? That's very simple. I know it sounds complicated, but just keep in mind, use a semicolon when you're going to make a very long sentence. So let's look at the example. Some people write with a word processor, tablet, or even a phone. But others, for example, for different reasons, I'm sorry, but others for different reasons choose to write with a pen or pencil. So what do we have here? We have two independent uh, clauses. The first one is some people write with a word processor, all right? Where's our second one? Others, but others. Notice how we start with a conjunction. So because we're starting with a conjunction, we need to use a semicolon but this is not always not any conjunction allow us to use semicolon why do we know that we have to use a semicolon in this particular case well because we teacher. have yeah teacher, in the sentence in, uh, when you use the comma the com the comma no the comma in in in, in the comma in a ver, y, y also, y also follow we follow or follow or a uh, preposition. Eh, o sea, yo quiero decir que si también, si después de, de la coma y hay una preposición, ahí también se pone la coma, porque, o sea, table, coma o pensaba que la preposición quitaba la coma. Eh. Lo que pasa aquí, esto aquí es una... De la coma, pero en el punto y coma no en la coma, en semicolon no en coma. ¿De cuál coma? Ahí donde usted dice procesador, tablet o mm. eh, incluso teléfono, ¿no? Entonces, ahí esa preposición no quita, o sea, cuando uno escribe en español la preposición no quita la coma anterior, porque uno dice... 
pues en español uno dice, eh, yo estoy aburrida eh, y cansada. Entonces, ese, ese y no me hace poner esa preposición y me impide poner la coma. Bueno, lo que pasa aquí es que este bat no es una conjunción, es una... No, 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 no. el bat no, acá donde dice tablet or even a phone. Or, ¿cuál es la conjunción acá? En table, coma, or. No, ahí estamos usando una serie de eventos, de listas. Y la razón por la que usamos coma es porque cada uno de estos es un item, entonces lo voy a escribir. Uno es un word processor, el otro es un tablet y el, el, ahí, el otro ahí, es un ahí, teléfono. Ahí donde, sigue, ahí donde sigue la preposición or elimina la coma, pues o sea, en español o no. No, siempre, siempre tienes que usarla. Se llama... Va, va la preposición y coma. Por ejemplo, si digo ella es bella y alta, esa ahí tengo que ponerle la coma de, antes de la I. No, ahí no porque estás hablando de un solo sujeto. Aquí la usamos porque estamos hablando de tres sujetos. Mm. Que es el word processor, el tablet. Si, por ejemplo, ella es bella y flaca, estoy hablando solo de ella. Pero si dijera María es bella y flaca. Eh, Giovanna es alta y rubia. Entonces, en ese caso sí tengo que usar la coma. Porque estoy hablando de dos sujetos. Ok. Ya, 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 ya. Ok, thank you. No problem. So, the reason why uh, we use a semicolon right here is because, yeah, we're listing various items and we have a um, conjunction. So, this conjunction is but. Normally, before we write but, we need to write comma. Always. Uh, most of the time, I'm sorry. So, but, when we write but, we know that we have a comma before that. In this case, why don't we use a semicolon before but? Because this but is talking about, uh, for different reasons, choose to write a pen, uh, with a pen or pencil. So right after this but, we're given more information. But what type of information? One information that it includes more commas. That includes commas. Okay, so some people write with a word processor, tablet, or even a phone. But, and I need to make, why do I, why do I put the semicolon here? Because that but is given more information about our second independent clause. But others, for different reasons, Notice how we also have a transitional phrase for different reasons. Choose to write with a pen or pencil. All right. Now, this one is not as mandatory as the previous example that we were doing. So what I want you to remember the most about the semicolon is well, when we have Lisa has a pig, a cow, a rabbit versus Lisa has a pig that flies a cow that is blue, and a rabbit that is tall. So when you're given more information about those items, you have to use the semicolon. Now the first one is also when you have two independent clauses. In this one we were talking about some people write with a word processor, others with a pen or pencil. Now let's do some exercises. So we need to avoid using the comma when a semicolon is needed. <clears throat> we have a correct example. It says, the cow is brown, it is also old. And we also have a correct one. The cow is brown, it is also old. So Diana, why is uh, the cow is brown, semicolon, it is also old? Correct. Why is that correct? What is the correct sentence? Uh, or why is the reason? What is the reason? The cow is brown. It is brown. Oh. Because you um, you have uh, two clauses. Very well. You got it. 
So we have two independent classes. How do we know that these are two independent classes? We have the cow, which is our subject, and the verb, which is is. This is our uh, first independent class. But notice, we also have a second one independent class. We have the subject, it, and the verb, which is is. We call this our second independent clause. And we have, when we have two independent clauses, we need to use the semicolon. So you got it right. Thank you, Diana. Now let's look at this one. We have, I like cows. However, I hate the way they smell. And we also have, I like cows. However, I hate the way they smell. So, Nubia, please tell me why uh, the second one is correct. The, the second, the second clause, because the uh, and there, there is a, preposi a preposition and, and, has, and has two independent clauses. The subject is I and, and first independent clause I is subject. Mm -hmm. and, like, and like is, is verb in second independent clause. I uh, is is subject is hate independent clause. Eh, such a verb. Verb. Mm -hmm. You got it. Okay. So we actually have two two reasons for using the semicolon. First is the one that Nubia just told us is because we have two independent clauses. One, I like cows, and two, I hate the way they smell. This is our second. Um, independent clause. So very well, Nubia. And we also have another uh, explanation. Well, we have however. However is a conjunction. And in this case, it's acting as a transitional phrase. I like cows. Transition. Well, I'm going to tell you something about cows that I don't like about as much as... Even if I say I like them, I need to say that I hate the way they smell. So I need to make a transition. When I make this type of transitions, I use the semicolon. So that is the second reason why we use the semicolon. Very well, Novia. Okay. <clears throat> now we also have this one. It says, I like cows. They give us milk, which tastes as good. They give us beef which tastes good, which also tastes good. And they give us leather, which is used for shoes and coats. That's incorrect. We know that the correct way to say that is, I like cows. They give us milk, which tastes good. All right. They give us beef, which also tastes as good. And they give us leather, which is used for shoes and coats. Now in this second example, where are our semicolons? Right here we have one, and right here we have two, and that's the end. So Diana, why do I use two semicolons in, in the second example? Because you have a list, but every item is described. Perfect. You need to use semicolon in each uh, sentence or clause. Mm -hmm. So I have a list, very well said, and each of the items are given as some kind of information. So it's not just milk, uh, leather, beef. No, we all we have milk, which tastes as good. We have beef, what kind of beef, which also tastes as good. And we also have a leather, but what kind of leather? which is used for shoes and coats. So this is the reason why we use uh, semicolons. That was perfect from Diana. Thank you. And finally, 
we all have here. This one is kind of hard, so don't worry if you don't get it. Because cow smell, they offend me. We also have a correct one. Because cow smell, they offend me. The correct one is with the comma. The incorrect one is with a semicolon. So why do I use a comma here instead of a semicolon? Novia, please answer me. Help me with this one. I don't know, teacher. Don't worry about that. So, Diana, can you help um, Nubia? Uh, well, I think it's because you can separate these sentences because they have uh, a one sentence together. Uh, so, because causes now they offend me. It's a. It's, um, it's our only sentence. Okay, you're very close. So, this is. Both are two sentences. One sentence, one sentence, and one sentence. However, between those, we have one clause and two clause. One clause and two clause. What type of clause is because cow smell? Is an independent clause or a dependent clause? Diana, what do you think is this type of clause? Dependent or independent? Dependent. Very well, dependent. This is a phrase. So, it's only information. Well, because the, we have because, it's a clause. So, it's a dependent clause. If it was a phrase, it, it would just say cows. Cow smell. Cows. Okay. How about this one? They offend me. Is this a dependent clause or an independent clause? They offend me. This is an independent clause. Very well. Why is it independent? You you can understand. They offend me. Mm -hmm. We have a word. subject. They. We have a verb. They offend me. You can just simply understand if someone tells you they offend me. You don't need more information about that. However, we have a subject and a verb. So the rule says that we use a semicolon only when we have Two independent clauses. Clauses. And right here, we have one independent clause. And the second one is independent. One dependent, I'm sorry. And the second one is independent. So because of this, one is dependent and the second one is independent, I need to use the comma. If they were both independent i know from this example that i need to use a semicolon for example some people write with a word some people write and the other other writes with a pen this is very similar to that one however in this case we have one independent and the other one is dependent so this that's the reason why we use a comma instead of a semicolon. You got that, Diana? Is that clear? Yes, teacher. It's clear. Thank you. Perfect. All right. And how about you, um, Nubia? Uh, teacher, you can explain the when I depend close, depend close. Yes, of course. Which is the characteristic? Um, okay, I think I got it here. So a dependent clause, let me write it again. Dependent clause.
a dependent clause needs to depend on more information because uh, if I just say it as it is, you will uh, end up confused. For example, if I say with my car, this is a dependent clause with my car. Why is it dependent? Because I need more information about what are you doing with your car? What are you trying to say? If, if you tell me with my car, I will probably ask you, all right, what with your car? However, if I ask you, uh, um, what did you use to go to, jo to your, jo to your office yesterday? You were probably and can answer, uh, I use my car or with my car simply. And I will understand. I don't need more information about that. However, in the context of just writing at, uh, with my car, I know this is dependent because, well, we have a subject, but where is her verb? We don't have a verb. On the other hand, we also have independent clause. An independent clause has a verb and a subject. And let's make an example about that. So, I, let's make it very similar to, I drive with my car. So notice, here I have my subject, here I have my verb, and here I have my object. I drive with my car. I can simply say this and you will very easily understand me. However, if I say with my car, this is a dependent clause. It's dependent on more information. Uh, is that clear, Nubia? It's clear, teacher. Very well. So, girls, this is the end of the lesson. I appreciate your attendance and I hope you have a happy rest of the day. All right? Take care, guys. Thank you, Good. teacher. Okay, my pleasure, Diana. Goodbye. Bye, bye, Nubia. Goodbye.